Okay, so our, we're going to draw the shear force and bending moment diagram for this structure. Uh, the first thing that's always a good idea to do is to find your reactions. So what I'm going to do is draw at A my positive shear force, and over here at B I'm going to draw positive shear force. Remember, we're drawing a shear force and bending moment diagram. So I want to make sure that I put positive sign conventions for those there. Now these are both pins, so what's the moments going to be? Zero. Zero, so I don't have to worry about those. So the first thing I want to do is solve for the shear A and the shear B. So I'll do that by summing moments, and I'll just pick one point to do it. I'll uh, sum moments at A. And we'll make sure that that's in equilibrium. So summing moments about A, both my applied forces, uh, using the right-hand rule, what kind of moment are those going to be, positive or negative? negative? Negative. So the force will be P. The first distance from A will be L. Second distance to the so the distance to the second force will be 2L. And then I'll have this reaction shear over here. What kind of moment does that create about A? Also negative. And that'll be the shear at B times its moment arm, which is 3L. So if you solve for the shear at B, you get what? Minus P. That means the shear at B is negative. Now I can come back and sum forces in the y direction. There's my equilibrium statement. And let's see what we've got. Well, I've got my, I'm, I'm assuming up is positive. So the shear at A is up, so that's positive. The shear at B is down, so that's negative. And then I've got one, two forces each P, and they're also down. So that'd be minus P, minus P. Now you can see I've already solved for the shear at B, so I can plug that in. So when I solve for the shear at A, I end up that it's equal to P. So I have a positive shear force at A and a negative shear force at B. So when I draw my shear diagram, I better predict at A what value? Positive P. And at B, I better predict negative P. So that's all I can get from that first part. Now what I like to do is kind of draw a template that shows that I'm going to start here on the left side and I'm going to go here to the right side. That's kind of the, my boundary of the space. And then I'm going to come down here and assume a positive axis for x and a positive axis for my shear. And I also like to come over here and put whatever unit this is going to be. So I'll just say this, that all my shear is going to be in kips. So I don't have to worry about putting a unit on every value. Okay? Now, I'm going to try to construct my shear diagram based upon what I already know and my loading. Now, my two, my two uh, things to help me out are going to be that I know that the change in shear is the area under the load curve, right? And also that the shape of the shear diagram, which is given by the slope, is equal to the load. So let's see how I can use those. Now, I'm going to start here at the left side. Do I know the shear at x equals zero? That's A. Do I know the shear at A? Sure. What is it? It's equal to P. So I know that I'm going to start off at a value of P. <coughs> now also I know what's going to happen when I go from the left side to the right side under these point loads. I'm going to have an abrupt change in my shear diagram, right? So I want to add those locations to the template of my shear force and bending moment diagram to remind me that those are important points. So now I'm going to apply these things. So the first one says, hey, the change in shear is equal to the area under the load curve. 
the change in shear from where to where? Let's say the change in shear from 0 to L. Right here. What is the area under the load curve between 0 and L? Well, what is the load? 0. What's the area under a 0 curve? 0. So there is no change in shear. So what should be the shear value right to the left here? Should be P. Right? No change in shear. Now what should be the shape of the curve that connects these two points? It could be anything, but according to this it says the slope of the shear diagram is equal to the load. What's the load equal to? Zero. What kind of curve has a zero slope? A horizontal line. So there's the shear diagram for the first section zero to L. Now, as I go from the left side to the right side, how much does my shear change? Exactly equal to the point load, right? And is that a positive or negative change? Negative. So if I start at P and I subtract P, what do I get? I get zero. Okay, now I want to find the change in shear from here. The shear is zero. I want to see what the value is on this side. I want this change. So from L to 2L. So what's the area under the load curve from L to 2L? Zero. So the change is, there is none. So if I start at zero and I add nothing to it, I get zero. And the slope of the shear diagram there is equal to the load. And the load is zero. So a a curve with zero slope is a horizontal line. So this middle third of the beam has no shear. The first third has positive shear. The middle third has no shear. Let's see what the last third should be. Oh, by the way, what should our shear be when we get all the way to the end? What's the shear at B? Nope. It's minus P. So I better hit minus P or I've done something wrong. I should oh. always go back to zero. No, it's not true. The shear at that point is the shear at B. And what's the shear at B? Is it zero? Yeah. No, the shear at B is minus P. Yeah. This is positive, right? And what did I calculate it to be? Negative. So that means it's negative shear. I'm plotting it negative shear. Is that not a reaction then? Yeah, but it's a shear. Isn't a shear a force? Shear is force, right? So instead of just being a reaction that I assume any direction I want, I'm assuming shear sign convention. Because I'm drawing a shear diagram, not a reaction diagram. I'm drawing a shear diagram. What's the change in shear from, oh, what, as I go from the left side here to the right side, how much is my shear change? So zero minus P is negative P. And what's the change in shear over the last third? Well, it's the area of a load curve. The area of a load curve is zero, so no change. So that means minus P plus nothing is minus P. Yay. I hit my target. And what's the shape of the curve here? According to this, it's the load, and the load is zero. So I get a horizontal line. So now this tells you <coughs> how shear varies across the beam. Now, if you, were, if you wanted to do this with equations, how many sets of equations would you have had to have written? You had to write three. One good from zero to L, one from L to 2L, and a third from 2L to 3L. That's a lot of work. So this is, this is nice. This works really nicely, too, for point loads. All right, so now that we have a shear diagram that we're comfortable with, let's assume positive x and positive moment, and let's say all these values will have the units of kip p. Now, what do we know about moment in this structure? 
What's the moment at x equals zero? Zero. zero. So I, I better start at zero. Do I know the moment somewhere else? What's the moment at b? Zero. So I better start at zero, apply my, uh, my relationships. I need to land back at zero. Now remember, for moment, we know that the change in moment is the area under the shear diagram. And that the slope of the moment diagram is equal to the shear. So starting and looking at this first section from zero to L, what's the area under the shear diagram? Yeah, it's a rectangle, base times height, L times P. And that is positive, right? So that means I'm going to start at zero. My changing moment is PL, so I better hit here and get PL. And what's the slope of the moment diagram? What's equal to the shear? What's the value of the shear from zero to L? It's constant and positive. So here's a constant positive slope. In fact, if you calculated it, you would find that the slope was P to one. What's the change in moment from L to 2L? Well, it's the area under the shear diagram. What's the area under the shear diagram? Zero. So that means it stays at PL. And what's the shape of the moment diagram? Well, it's given by the shear, and the shear there is zero. So here's a zero slope curve, horizontal line. Now, what's the change in moment from 2L to L, 3L? That's this area, which is what? Minus P times L. So PL plus minus PL brings me to zero. Yay. And what's the shape of that curve? Well, it's given by the shear. And the shear is constant. So I have a constant slope. And it's negative. So if you looked at this slope, it would look like that. And there's your moment diagram. So now, what's the value of the maximum moment? It's PL. And where does it occur? Anywhere between L and 2L. <coughs> Most of you remember that uh, we loaded a beam like this in the freshman class. Remember in the spring class, our reinforced concrete beams? They look just like that. And you might remember that we had lots of problems with cracking and bending in the middle third. And we had lots of problems with shear on the end thirds. And that's why. You can see where the shears are maximum and you can see where the bending moment is maximum. So we'll work a lot more of these over the next few days for classes. Yeah.